So in this next sequence of videos, we want to move on and look at additional problems that deal with interaction via text. But we want to look at what happens when the text that comes in is numerical text. And I think a good uh, domain for this set of, of examples is to return to my square tracer program from the end of module one. You may recall that at the end of module one, I introduced uh, Square Tracer, a program that made uh, a square on the screen and had the cat move out of the way. And, and you did two versions of this in a task. And I introduced an alternative version of this, Square Tracer number three, that used the repetition block. Right? We use this as a way to introduce the idea of repeating something multiple times. And so we said, hey, what is a square? Well, four times it's moving 100 steps and turning 90 degrees. And so we, we worked with this. Well, I could very easily imagine in an upper elementary classroom or a middle school classroom, maybe even a high school geometry classroom, talking using this kind of problem to talk about a variety of shapes. And so now that we know how to have you know, a character ask questions of us, maybe we want to expand this program. Instead of being called Square Tracer, let's save a copy of this out. And let's call this Shape Tracer. Let's make it a, a program that's going to make any shape that the user puts in. Right? We want to have the cat ask the question at the beginning about what kind of shape should be made. And so if we think about this, the cat's going to start out by, by doing his places, everybody, going to the middle. But before he makes a shape, we want to actually have him ask a question about what kind of shape he should make. All right, well, we know how to do that now. Let's go to sensing and add in an ask block. And so let's see. The question that the cat really should ask is, how many sides are on my shape? Right? So he's going to draw a shape with some number of sides. So we're going to get that information in. We need to make a variable to store that so we can use that information. Uh, so it seems to me, since this is storing the number of sides on the shape, we should call it sides. I'm a big believer in using uh, good variable names. And so let's set sides to whatever answer they gave me. And now if you think about this, we, we, we say how many sides are on my shape, and we come down, and instead of repeating four times, right? well, we don't always want to do four times. We want to do whatever number the user gave me. right? We want to repeat sides times. And so if we run this, how many sides are on my shape? Four. He makes a really nice square. And if I rerun this and say how many sides are on my shape? Three. He makes not a triangle. right? He makes something that actually looks like a square. OK, I didn't think this problem through well enough, did I? Right? I did say repeat three times, so we only see three lines here. But the problem is that the code in my block inside of this repeat always turns 90 degrees. And so if I try to make a triangle, I get you know, only a partial square. And if I try to make an octagon, uh, what I actually get is just he draws the square twice, right? He, he drew eight sides. He did draw what I said, eight sides, but he's drawing 90 degree angles each time. So let's go back and let's, let's think about how we can change this. We know that I want to change some variable number of degrees. The question is, how many degrees should I turn? Right? I mean, for a square, those are 90 degree corners. What is it for a triangle? Let's just stop and assume I'm going to put in a triangle so that we can understand how the math works with this. Right? Well, if it's a triangle, you know that if I'm making an equilateral triangle, that I have three corners that are 60 degrees each. And so it might seem like you want to try you know, 60 degrees in there for a triangle. So let's put in three. But you realize that quickly that that's not right, right? It's not 60 degrees that I want in there. And so this is an interesting way to have a conversation with students about interior angles and exterior angles. The problem is that the angle that when I say turn 60 degrees, that doesn't say make an interior angle of 60 degrees. What it really represents is how far we're turning away from the direction I was. That's the exterior angle. So if I want an interior angle of 60, I actually need an exterior angle of 120. So I can run this with sides of 3. And you can see that that works. 
Okay, well then the question is, what, how do I calculate this? Because obviously I'm cheating right now. I'm just putting a number in based on what I assume I'm going to enter here. I want this value to change. What should it be? Well, you may recall this from my discussion in module one about uh, you know, making circles and things like that, making some shapes, that, that in fact, if the cat is starting here and is going through a full rotation of 360 degrees, the total number of turns that the cat makes, uh, the total uh, quantity of the turns has to add up to 360 degrees. And so when there were four sides, four sides of 90 made 360 degrees. When they're making a triangle, it's three sides, three sides with 120 degrees each, 3 times 120 is 360. And so this number is obviously calculated by doing 360 divided by the number of sides. And so we're going to go to the operations tab. And we haven't looked at the mathematical operations yet, but here's a good opportunity for this, right? I want to use the division operator here. And I want to turn some number of degrees. And the number of degrees I want to turn is the result of taking 360 divided by the number of sides. So now let's run this. I can say 4, and I get a nice square. And I can say 3, and I get a nice triangle. So there we go. We've got our first version of this problem done. We've got what seems to be a nice shape tracer. In our next videos, we'll look at how we actually build on this and handle some potential error conditions. So to wrap up this lesson, in this lesson we introduced the idea of using the ask block to take in numerical data rather than simply textual data, and we use that to produce a customized version of ShapeTracer. We'll extend that idea even further in our next lesson.